All right, we had an insane game, craziness all across the board. Let's get into all of it. Well, first, let's start off with some really incredible plays, I thought, by both quarterbacks. So we're going to start off with one by Justin Herbert here. There's two safeties deep, and one of the reasons why, the, you know, one of the things you have to do with a two safety deep coverage is if it's a running play, you have to move up to stop the run. And this is why, you know, even with great quarterbacks, sometimes having a consistent running game can still come in handy because it can set up play action. It still really shouldn't be your main way to get the ball down the field if you have a Justin Herbert or a Patrick Mahomes, but it can help you set up things that can make it easier to get you down the field by using Justin Herbert. So uh, it's going to get the safeties to move in. Watch how Herbert takes the snap, runs the play ac action, and the safeties bite. And at this point, you're going to have one-on-one -on -one matchups down the field, and Herbert wants to take advantage of that. Watch. Justin Herbert is going to eventually make one a throw to one of them. And you see right here, there's not a ton of separation, but that's actually okay. You don't need a ton of separation here, especially if you're Justin Herbert. One of the things I talked about in a video I posted earlier today, actually, is that Justin Herbert has the ability to throw the ball so well. He has such great arm talent that sometimes doing that, it can just make it much more difficult to uh, just, you know, if you're a defensive back, you have less time to turn around and knock the ball away, right? You know, you just it, there's just less time, but the receiver can, you know, he knows when the ball is coming. He can adjust to it right away, especially in a situation like this where the defensive back's back is turned because he was getting beat by half a step. And so as you see, it's a good throw and they're able to pick up a big gain. They get in, you know, close to the goal line. They would eventually get into the end zone on a future play. So that's kind of, you know, one of those classic Justin Herbert plays. And it was also set up well by some, you know, a uh, good job of, you know, getting them to bite on the play action. All that stuff was good. And then there's this play, which, you know, there's the meme of, you know, when someone else makes a great play, people say, if Mahomes did this, the whole, you know, the internet would go crazy or whatever, or the media would go crazy about it, all of that stuff. Uh, it's a funny meme. But I'm almost wondering if the pendulum has swung so much in the other direction that we're not truly appreciating just how bonkers some of these plays that he makes are because we just almost take it for granted at this point that he makes bonkers plays. So the way this play works, it's man coverage. They have a little uh, pick play type situation going on the you know, to the offense's left. Mahomes takes the snap. He looks in that direction and he could make this throw. It's not going to get you too much yards. And the reality is there's a lot of traffic over there. So I actually think he's making the right call and not one wanting to make this throw and again for someone else you have to find another receiver who's open but for Mahomes he can take his time because he can bide more time watch him scramble outside the pocket and he's gonna do a couple things one he breaks a tackle and two he looks downfield and notices he has a receiver who's I'm not gonna call this wide open there is kind of a window where you can make this throw and also just you know from a television watching perspective, it makes it all the more perfect where you can actually see basically the exact angle that Mahomes sees, but you can see how it's a tough angle and it's going to be difficult for him to make this throw. Mahomes sidearms it off balance with perfect accuracy for a touchdown. Like, I'm not going to take that for granted. I always love these plays. These plays always make me go crazy. I feel like every time I see it, I'm going to, you know, going to gush over the incredibleness of Patrick Mahomes. You know, the fact that we get two of these two of these games a year where we get to see Mahomes versus Herbert, it's just truly awesome. Now let's go over here. We saw some weird plays is the best way I can think about it. So this situation, I'm just going to kind of let it play. It's uh, second down and two. And, you know, for you have Patrick Mahomes, right? You just saw the play that he can make. What do you do? Well, what did Andy Reid do? He's going to first rush the ball here. So, okay, you ran the ball and gained a yard. Not what you wanted, but now here, third down and one, they run the ball again, do not get it, and then would punt it back to the Chargers. This is just one of those, like, this should never happen, right? I get. I just talked about what the advantage of running the football is in a game like this, where two teams play two safeties deep basically all game. There's definite advantages here, but I don't know. It just leaves you with a sour taste in your mouth when you run the ball on second down and two, third down and one, and then punt the ball away when you have someone like Patrick Mahomes. And meanwhile, over here now, we got to talk about Brandon Staley's fourth down decision making and not in the way that we typically have to talk about Brandon Staley's fourth down decision making. What has the media done to Brandon Staley? What is going on? It's a fourth down and two midfield. This is, you know, what do the analytics say, right? That's what we always think about with Brandon Staley. Well, using the uh, fourth down decision bot on Twitter, uh, again, 
you know, just to plug it there, big fan of it. I have, you know, uh, this is not a paid promotion. You guys know I'm just a big fan of what they do th there on the fourth down decision bot. Everyone, you know, give that a follow or just check it out. But for that, it says that the uh, percentages of winning, you're getting about three percentage points higher for going for it than for punting. And keep in mind, this is in a given situation. The fact that you have, you know, this is uh, simply in a vacuum. They're not taking into account the fact that you have Justin Herbert and have a much better chance of converting on a fourth and two than the average team does, which means that, you know, the 60% success rate is actually probably a lot higher than that. Instead, the uh, Los Angeles Chargers would punt it away, a very unbranded Staley-like decision that certainly surprised me, and I'm wondering why he did that. And then we're going over here. Another, this is not the same play. This is a different play. Yes, it's still fourth and two at midfield, but there's, you know, we're now talking one minute and four seconds left uh, in the half. You look at the analytics and yes, if it worked the first time, it's still going to work this time. A little bit stronger even this time just because of the time left uh, on the clock in the half. Uh, this is just one of those kind of uh, curious decisions that some coaches like to do, some conservative coaches will do, but it's surprising coming from the guy who was known for all of his aggressive fourth down decision making last year. Again, it's just a punt. Some people will be very happy that he has done this. I am not. I'm very disappointed. I know people will bring up the Raiders game. His fourth down decision making helped more than it hurt last year. Got him more points than it gave them, than it cost them last year, and it got him more wins than it cost them last year. There's just that one game that sticks out in everyone's mind. I'm not sure if the media uh, kind of frenzy there, and it's sort of a job security move by Brandon Staley. Perhaps, maybe that's the reason, but I don't know. I think you got to do what's best for your football team and don't worry about if you get criticized by, you know, Colin Cowherd or whoever. I'm not even sure if he criticized them, but you know what I mean? Just the uh, the talking heads. You don't want to worry about getting criticized by me, right? What do I know? I'm a YouTuber. Uh, do what's going to help you, you win football games. And I don't, I don't, I didn't get this call. We saw Justin Herbert continue to make some great play specifically this one it's gonna be a great really great catch from Mike Williams but also a great throw it's one-on-one -on -one matchup sort of that goal line fade uh they're not at the goal line but uh you know a, a fade that will get into the end zone and as you see Herbert is gonna look in that direction takes the one-on-one -on -one matchup Williams wins the one-on-one -on -one matchup good throw good catch good touchdown so you know that's definitely something that uh Herbert was able to make a couple of those Classic Justin Herbert plays. Meanwhile, for Mahomes, he had a few interceptions that did not count. This one, which could should have been called back, correct call. Clearly, uh, he got receiver got tackled. This one, which uh, you know just barely bounced, and that's why that one was not uh, an interception. And then this one, which probably should have been uh, an interception. You look back at this angle, uh, kind of definitely feels like, yeah, I'm not quite sure if this is defensive pass interference right here. Especially one, maybe the best way you could argue that it should be defensive pass interference is if you want to say that the wide receiver, uh, you know, was playing the ball and the defensive back wasn't, but the ball hadn't even, was really just getting thrown when, at this point, so I don't really buy into that. The interception that was just essentially straight up dropped, uh, that one was not really Mahomes' fault, uh, it was, or maybe it was, but it was at least a miscommunication, so I don't know how much blame to put on him for that one. This is the only one I would really say, yeah, that one was kind of tough. Although also this play probably should have been an interception. Listen, Mahomes will, he's a gunslinger. He'll take some chances and sometimes it'll work out, sometimes it will not. Obviously, you m definitely take the good with the bad because there's so much good and not that much bad, but there will be some bad. Uh, you know, he he puts the ball in harm's way. That's just the reality of the situation. But also seemingly uh, he throws the most uncatchable ball for the defense. I don't know what it is, but uh, I'm sure he's happy about it. We then saw this play, which was just, uh, you know, it's just one of those classic Mahomes plays, right? Uh, especially very funny where it seems like he keeps turning the ball over. None of them actually count. And then he's going to do this where it's going to essentially be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Justin Watson versus JC Jackson. And the reality is, this isn't anything fancy. Watson's just going to win this route. But watch Patrick Mahomes. There's pressure, but is he ever really concerned about pressure? No. He steps up in the pocket, throws way off balance, but he can just flick his wrist and throw the ball 50 yards down the field. And you see Justin Watson, who's a guy who's, you know, been a practice squad guy for, for a decent part of his career, is now burning one of the best corners in football. As you see, great throw. J.C. Jackson not able to make the play. Again, it was a Mahomes throw as well, so that makes it more tough for Jackson, but still, great play. This is the play that, I mean, you know, this was a, a jaw-dropping play. Every now and then you get one of these in a tight game where it's just one of those, can, did that really just happen type plays? 
It had a EPA of minus 13, and the win percentage for the Chargers went from over 60% to just 16% when it happened just a massive swing in the game let's talk about what happened so uh it's gonna be man coverage that the chiefs are in and just a weird play you're gonna see everett right here kind of just you know really very lacklustery uh i'm not sure if lacklustery is a word but we'll go with it run out there and at this point you know again he called to be taken out of the game he was tired but just didn't have uh time to take him out so he stuck out there uh for me, if I'm Justin Herbert and I see this situation and I see him not continuing to run towards the pylon, I'm assuming he's cutting back to the inside. He's going for inside leverage. That's what I would assume if I was Herbert here. So I honestly don't blame Herbert at all for this throw. I know a lot of people are going to. The quarterback always gets some blame. And if you want to play by that logic, then sure, fine. But to me, this is a good throw. It just happened to be a you know great defensive play intercepted for a touchdown. I can't show the whole play. It will get copyrighted. But that's how I viewed that play is is, a, you know, kind of an unfortunate error in devastating consequences. That's why it's so jaw-dropping, I think. There was then this situation, which again, I'm not going to break down all of it, but you know, listen, uh, the, the, the Brandon Staley fourth down decision-making things was such a storyline last year. The fact that he's not going for it on fourth down when the analytics say he should, which is this situation, it says that they're more likely to win if they go for it than if they don't by a percentage point. So not huge, but still, I mean, that, that's pretty significant. It's definitely uh, a surprise, I would say, that he did not do it. Um, I'm going to just put my reaction to this in the video, I suppose. Uh, I'm watching this live right now. I'll just leave this on the screen. Uh, Justin Herbert looks to be hurt, so I'm hoping that's not too bad. Uh, but that would really suck. Uh, it definitely makes it a lot less fun to be talking about fourth down decision making. So, uh, you know, I'll give an update on that. Uh, it for you guys in just a second, hoping that this works out okay. Uh, it doesn't look okay. That's not great. Very sad to see that. Well, actually, Justin Herbert ended up trying to stick it out and did a pretty good job. Made it a three-point game. It was just too late at that point. So, uh, yeah, pretty crazy game. What did you guys think about all of that wildness? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.